हेलो एवरी वन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस थ्री फेज इंडक्शन मोटर प्रोटेक्शन इट्स यूर यूनिट फोर नाउ इंडक्शन मोटर्स कम्स इन द वाइड रेंज ऑफ रेटिंग्स फ्रॉम फ्रैक्शनल हॉर्स पॉवर मोटर्स यूज इन टूल्स एंड डोमेस्टिक अप्लायसेस टू द मोटर्स ऑफ मेगा वॉट रेटिंग्स यूज फॉर द बॉयलर फीड पम्प इन थर्मल पावर स्टेशन सो द ब्रॉड क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ द इंडक्शन मोटर्स it is given in this table if the power rating it is less than 1 kilowatt then it is classified under the small motor if the power rating it is greater than 40 kilowatt then it is classified under medium size induction motor if it is greater than 1000 kilowatt then it is classified under the big size now it is not possible to make any general statement about the protection of the induction motor since the protection scheme depends upon the size of the motor and it's important in the power system so the the meaning of the statement is that we can't uh, the protection scheme provided to the induction motor depends upon its size as well as its importance in the power system however regardless of what protection we may provide all the motors whether it is a small motor big motor or the medium size motors are subjected to the similar faults and abnormal conditions now what are the different uh, faults and abnormal operating conditions now induction motor cannot be considered in isolation because on one side it is connected to the supply possibly through some kind of power electronic controllers and on other side it is mechanical mechanically coupled to the load therefore the induction motor is subjected to a large number of faults and abnormal condition as shown in the now we know that what is a motor that is a machine which converts electrical energy into what mechanical energy so on one side it is connected to the electrical supply that is a three phase supply through some power electronic controller and on other side it is connected to what mechanical load so there are basically three parts input side of the induction motor which is electrical second one is the induction motor itself and a third one is the output that is nothing but the mechanical load so there is a possibility that the fault may occur on the supply side in the motor itself as well as on the load side so on the supply side the faults on the motor terminals unbalanced supply voltage single phasing reduced supply voltage reverse or reversal of the phases in motor itself it it can be a phase faults ground fault and the interton fault on the load side it will it may be a failure of bearings prolonged overload and the rotor stator faults these faults includes phase to phase faults earth fault and the interton fault the faults in the motor winding are generally occur due to the failure of the insulation which causes due to the excess heating in the winding of the machine phase to phase fault are rare because enough insulation is provided between the phases now this is a very basic concept suppose if the short circuit occur or if the overload occur what will happen the magnitude of current in the winding increases as the amount of current increases i square r loss will also increases and as the losses increases what will happen the temperature will increases and because of the increase in the temperature there may be a possibility that the insulation may get fail and this may causes the phase fault or the phase to phase fault or the interton faults phase to phase faults are rare because enough insulation it is provided the earth faults are more likely occurs in the induction motor the interton fault uh, if occur leads to the earth fault hence it is sufficient to provide the protection for the earth fault interton fault means the fault occurs between the two turns or you can say in a single phase the, the winding it is provided Uh, in a single phase we know that it consists of what winding and if the fo fault occur between that two turns three turns then that is called as what now second one is the rotor fault 
these faults are more likely occur in wound rotor machine the faults on the wound rotor may either earth fault or the interton fault which occurs due to the severe mechanical and the thermal stresses the other fault which occurs on the rotor of the motor includes the failure of the bearings and the faults in the starter and associated abnormal conditions the some abnormal conditions that are likely to occur are the first one is the prolonged overloading it is caused by excessive mechanical loading short time cyclic overloading this causes the excessive rise of the temperature of the winding and deterioration of the insulation resulting in the winding fault hence overload protection should be provided in electrical machines irrespective of the size and the rating of the motor and the type of the load then next abnormal condition is the stalling due to the mechanical problem or overload during the period of the starting the motor may stall or refuse to start so during stalling the motor draws a huge amount of current hence it is not desirable and we should provide the immediate isolation of of the motor from the supply mains is essential next is the unbalanced supply voltage the unbalanced supply may cause the negative sequence current to flow in the motor that is likely cause the overheating of the next one is the under voltage the under voltage supply condition will lead to the drawing of more current from the supply mains hence the under voltage protection is also provided for the induction motor we know that there is a rating of the motor uh, we can see the rating of the motors or the lights etc what does it means the rating the rating means that the machine will operate satisfactory upon that given uh, supply conditions or up that rated values okay so there are some permissible tolerance are provided by standard but if your supply voltage is not falling within that standard then they will cause some adverse effect on the operating operation of the induction motor so we should monitor the supply voltage must be within the tolerable limits and if it is not we have to provide the protection against under voltage as well as what over voltage next one is the reverse phase the direction of the polyphase induction motor is reverse if the supply phase sequence is change in some motor applications such a protection may be then next one is the single phasing the single phasing in the motor cause when one of the supply lines get disconnected they may be occur due to the blowing of the fuse or open circuit in one of the three phase connection in such a condition the motor continues to operate as a single phase induction motor provided that the load should not exceed the 57.7% of the normal rating the single phasing may cause the extreme magnetic unbalanced reduction in the torque overheating due to the negative phase sequence currents the operating under this mode leads to the damage of the motor and hence we need to provide the protection against the single phasing of the motor it is a very important phenomena that is a single phasing and it is the uh, it is very essential to provide the protection against the single phase condition now there are some abnormal condition and the choice of protection circuit to be employed the first one is the mechanical overload so against that we can provide the protection using overload relays thermal overload relay over current relay mcbs with built in trip coil for second abnormal condition that is stalling or the prolonged starting of motor thermal relays instantaneous overcurrent relays are provided for under voltage we have we have to provide the under voltage relay for unbalanced voltage we have to provide negative phase sequence relays reverse phase protect sequence phase reversal relays are used phase to phase fault or phase to earth fault we have we provide the hrc fuse instantaneous overcurrent relay differential protection may be employed for the economy then against the single phase thermal overload relays single phase preventer is 
now this is uh, that is we uh, i have covered only the topics which are included in your syllabus that is the first that is the single phasing and we have already discussed what do you mean by the single phasing so how to provide the protection against the single phasings we will directly switch uh, you keep these uh, these are the some important points in your mind the single phasing leads to the unbalanced current in the motor stator the component which is present in this unbalanced current called as the negative sequence component this negative sequence component creates a magnetic flux opposite to that of the main flux and this results into double frequency current to induced in the rotor to cause its heating the current sensing the single phase preventer works like a negative sequence relay it operates on the principle of sensing the negative sequence components of the system so it is in short the single phasing leads to what unbalanced current and uh, unbalanced current it is called as what negative sequence component what does that negative sequence do it creates the magnetic flux but what is the direction it is opposite to that of the main flux and because of this it creates what double frequency components frequency components of the current and which will induce in the rotor and which will cause what heating and so it will again damage the motor so we have to provide the protection against the single phasing means we have to detect what negative sequence components okay so the sing current sensing single phasing preventer works like a negative sequence relay it operates on the principle of sensing the negative sequence components of the system if there is a negative sequence meaning is that the there is a unbalanced in the supply current and why the unbalanced in the supply current occurs because of what now you can see here here the cities are provided in each phase and the secondaries of the cities are connected to the negative phase sequence filter whenever the supply is balanced then there is no negative supply ne no negative sequence uh, components and therefore the relay will not operate so whenever there is a unbalanced in the supply voltage or you can say whenever there is a single phasing conditions then what will happen negative sequence component will flow and if the value exceeds the preset value the relay will operate and this relay will send signal to the trip circuit to isolate what induction motor so this is the protection against the single conditions second one is the short circuit protection or it is a phase fault protection the phase fault protection is nothing but the attracted armature type unit is connected in each phase current of the city of the motor this protection it is called as short circuit protection the city sends the motor current as well as what short circuit current at the time of fault the current increases by 5 to 10 times to the full load current of the motor due to this phase to phase fault can cause burn out of the coil and hence the motor should be disconnected as quickly as possible so high speed tripping over a current relay it is used so in short phase to phase fault uh, here we use what over current relays so the ct secondary are uh, connected to the rel uh, the, uh, the relays are connected in the ct secondary under normal operating conditions the current is within what its permissible limit but whenever there is a fault occur what will happen the current increases by 5 to 10 times and therefore uh, it will gives the signal uh, 5 to 10 times of the full load current and due to this the phase to phase phase to phase fault may burn the coils and hence we have to provide the protection against that now you can see here the cities are connected in each phase and uh, and the phase fault protection it is connected uh, what uh, phase fault protection relays are connected uh, in the city secondary these are nothing but the over current relays so under normal operating condition city secondary current will also within what permissible limit that is nothing but the rated current so the relay will not operate but if the fault occur then primary current will increases 
to the higher value and therefore what will be the ct secondary current it will be also very high and this current will flow through the relay coil and if the current exceeds the preset value the overcurrent relay will operates so in this way we have to we will provide the protection against the short circuit as well as what